जय हिंद वेलकम टू क्लास ऑफ कम्युनिकेशन सो वी आर स्टडिंग एनालॉग एंड डिजिटल कम्युनिकेशन एंड टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट विद एनालॉग कम्युनिकेशन रिसीवर्स दो व्हाट आर रिसीवर्स फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल रिसीवर इज अ डिवाइस दैट इज प्रेजेंट एट वन एंड ऑफ द कम्युनिकेशन वेयर माय इंटेंडेड डेस्टिनेशन इज प्रेजेंट so job of a receiver is to accept the signal which has traveled all the way through the channel and receive it like and interpret it and convert that signal into the original form in which it was uh, it was communicated right so as we know that a transmitter is a device that matches the characteristics of input signal with the available channel and it does all the necessary alterations that is required to make it pass through the available channel in a uh, effective way hence the job of the receiver will uh, will be to undo all that procedures like if a transmitter modulation multiplexing and encoding has taken place at receiver it will undo all the process like here demodulation will occur demultiplexing denoising decoding all this will occur at receiver we consider in an analog communication system the receiver is usually at a point which is geographically separated from a transmitter so here in this topic we'll be uh, studying about how a receiver works and what are the requirements of a receiver to make it a best uh, one of the best and effective receivers first of all it should be cost effective true it should receive the corresponding modulated signal right after modulation only we transmit signal so it must be capable of receiving my modulated signal the receiver should be able to tune the receiver should be able to tune and amplify the desired station right uh, we can make our receiver a receiver susceptible to particular frequency band only and it should be receiving that frequency in that band only so we call that a channel it should have an ability to reject the unwanted stations like if i tune my channel to a particular receivers all other signals all other frequencies it must be capable of rejecting demodulation as we know that modulated wave is received at my receiver so it should be capable of performing demodulation those are also called as detection techniques okay so for amplitude modulated wave the demodulation has to take place like if it is one of my conventional am then envelope detection an envelope detector must be present here which will be acting as a demodulator if it is a dsb sc or ssb or vsb then corresponding coherent receiver must be present here like one of the famous example of dsb sc receiver is my costas receivers so that has to be a part of my receiver although my complete receiver will be consisting of demodulator hence my demodulator is just a part of the complete receiver the uh, receiver is a complete box consisting of demodulation as a part of it demodulation has to be done to all the station signals irrespective of their carrier signal frequency true if i talk about specifically about my radio receivers it must uh, there are certain parameters that has to be taken care of there are certain features of a radio receiver that we need to understand first of all we talk about selectivity what do you mean by selectivity the selectivity of an amplitude modulated receiver is defined as its ability to ex accept or select the desired band of frequency and reject all other unwanted signals like if i want to communicate to you in some coded version like you and i talk in french i i don't want other people to understand so uh, i'll i'll choose a language that only you will understand so likewise when we talk of a receiver the first portion that will be accepting the signal uh, let it be a filter which is tuned to the desired frequency which i intend to receive so that it rejects all other frequencies but the wanted adjacent channel rejection of the receiver can be obtained from the selectivity parameter so this is one of the prime parameter of any analog receiver response of if section mixer section and rf section considerably contribute towards the selectivity all these sections we will be studying in detail when we see the block diagram of a receiver if here means uh, intermediate frequency my mixer section will simply be a product modulator and my rf section means my radio frequency section this will be the first 
because my modulated wave uh, is propagating in radio frequency. So my radio frequency section comes first, then my IF, uh, then it passes through a mixer and then comes my IF section and after that actual demodulation takes place. The signal bandwidth should be narrow for better selectivity which is true. If I keep my band gap too large then there will be chances of uh, too much of noise interference. Right? So I should keep it narrow. Graphically selectivity can be represented as curve shown in the figure. Let us see. If, if I see this graph between my frequency for which it is accepting the waves and attenuation on my y axis, my selectivity graph varies like this. Like first it drops, uh, like attenuation uh, the, uh, we can see with this graph that with the increase in frequency, first the attenuation decreases, then it increases, right. So, this is for the negative half, this is for the positive half, right. My selectivity, uh, I can show with the help of frequency and attenuation relation. Next important thing is the fidelity. Fidelity tells how good my system is to produce the originally received signal. Fidelity of a receiver is its ability to reproduce the exact replica of the transmitted signal at the receiver output. For better fidelity, amplifier must pass high bandwidth signals to amplify the frequencies of the outermost sidebands, while for better selectivity, the signal should have narrow bandwidth, right? Thus, a trade-off is made between selectivity and fidelity. Now, if I want my receiver to produce the exact replica of my input signal, I should be keeping the band gap large, right? Because communication may occur uh, in the band gap of my radio frequencies, which is huge. But if I narrow it down, that will act as a, uh, the, uh, its selectivity would be better. So, if, uh, you know, bandwidth is a factor, which I keep high, fidelity will increase, which I keep low, selectivity will increase. So, for a particular receiver, there must be a trade-off. There must be a trade-off between these two and we should focus on whether we are dealing with a better selectivity in a receiver or we want better fidelity and accordingly, we may choose the band gap. The low frequency response of in intermediate frequency amplifier determines fidelity at the lower modulating frequencies, while high frequency response of the IF amplifier determines fidelity at the higher modulating frequencies, true. The next thing is about the sensitivity, how sensitive my receiver is. So sensitivity tells us uh, like what minimum uh, uh, value of signal, like if, if I talk about value, I will be talking in terms of power maybe. Right, power is one of the prime factor. If my receiver is able to receive even very weak signals and amplify it, then its sensitivity is high. It is the ability to identify and amplify weak signal. If my receiver is able to detect very weak signals, then it is highly sensitive. And if it is not able to receive weak signals, it is not, uh, its sensitivity is comparatively low. It is often defined in terms of voltage, like just now I have spoken about power, power and voltage are related. If it can detect even very small value of voltage or power, then it is a sensitive kind of receiver. It must be applied to the input terminals of the receiver to produce a standard output power, which is measured at the output terminals. Okay. The higher value of receiver gain it is expressed in terms of gain as well, ensures smaller input signal necessary to produce the desired output power. So, if my receiver has high receiver gain, then it can detect even smaller inputs, right. Thus, a receiver with good sensitivity will detect minimum RF signal at the input, still produce utilizable demodulated signals, true. Sensitivity is also known as receiver threshold, true, threshold uh, like above which it detects, below which it does not detect. So mathematically it can be represented by a parameter as well, 
which we can also name as threshold. It is expressed in micro volts as we are talking about the voltage or power. So, we do represent it in micro volts or even in decibel it can be represented. Sensitivity of the receiver mostly depends on the gain of the IF amplifier. It, one of the prime factor deciding the sensitivity will be the gain of the IF amplifier. You know, at receiver in every stages we may use different uh, amplifiers and filters. Amplifiers and filters are such things that you can use at ev every stage of your receivers. So, we do have RF section, radio frequency section, we do have mixer section and we do have IF section. So, if, if I keep uh, the, um, the gain of my IF amplifier in such a way that it actually uh, decides the sensitivity of my receiver. It can be improved by reducing the noise level and bandwidth of the receiver which is true. If there is so much of noise in the surrounding, how will I be able to detect my actual signal? If there, uh, there is noise suppression, then even the minimum value of uh, uh, value of voltage, input voltage will be received and detected. Sensitivity can be graphically represented as a curve shown here. This is how it, this is like S, S kind of graph we get. So, on X axis we have frequency, on Y axis we have sensitivity, it varies in such kind of uh, a little kind of S. Frequency here we have represented in kilohertz and sensitivity in microvolt as discussed before. The fourth thing which is important in deciding uh, how good my receiver is, is double spotting or image frequency rejection ratio. Uh, what it is basically, uh, let us give it a look. Double spotting is a condition where the same desired signal is detected at two nearby points on the receiver tuning dial. What is it? Let us see. One point is the desired point while the other is called as spurious or image point. Like if I desire a free, uh, desire frequency x at input, but instead of x at times it receives y and somehow my receiver reads y in the form of x. Like it, it uh, somehow it perceives that this y is not y, this is x. But this is not the exact frequency which I am intended to receive. How does that ha this happens? We will get to see its detailing when we study super heterodyne receiver in, in next few slides. It is undesirable uh, since the strong signal might mask and overpower the weak signal at the spurious point in the frequency spectrum. Double spotting can be counteracted by improving the selectivity. See, double spotting and selectivity are related things. So, when we improve the selectivity, this can be reduced. Let us see a, an example. Consider an incoming strong signal of 1000 kilohertz and the local oscillator is tuned at 1455 kilohertz. We will we'll get to understand this when we study super heterodyne receiver in detail. Like what happened at the receiver end, when I receive a frequency, after after uh, the mixer section, I do have this IF section, right? And to this mixer, I do produce, uh, I do provide a frequency which I locally generate with the help of some function generators. In case of AM amplitude modulation, my IF frequency is fixed, which is 455 kilohertz. So, observing this, I will generate such frequency so as the difference between the generated frequency and 1000 will come out to be 1455, uh, sorry, 455. So, here, let us suppose instead of 1000, if I receive some other frequency like the, uh, like uh, now consider the same signal but with 545 kilohertz tuned local oscillator. Again, we get 455 kilohertz signal at the output, which is true. If in see the difference between 1000 and 455 is 545, here again, if I get uh, 545, then again the difference will be 455. Therefore, the same 1000 kilohertz signal will appear at 1455 kilohertz as well. What right? So, here what is happening? 
the difference between these two goes as 455 although my receiver was intended to receive channel x but instead of x it is receiving y as both of these are giving a difference of 455 kilohertz right so this frequency my y is becoming image frequency of my x so instead of receiving the intended frequency i am receiving some other frequency which appears as image of the other frequency which is not desired therefore the same 1000 kilohertz signal will appear at 1455 kilohertz as well as 545 kilohertz on the receiver dial and the image will not get rejected this is known as double spotting all the image frequency rejection uh, can also be applied here which we do by adjacent channel selectivity right now let's talk about a super heterodyne receiver which we actually use in an amplitude modulated waveform now such drawbacks are removed or reduced by using super heterodyne receiver one of the prime reason for using super heterodyne receiver is uh, to uh, reject the image frequency so let's see how my super heterodyne receiver looks like the first section is also called as pre-selector or this is the antenna which is tuned at RF frequency. This, this antenna receives my radio waves, modulated waves which were earlier represented with ST or I may call them, these are my radio waves. So the first section is my RF tuner section right? and my after I receive the signal, it will be amplified first as it has traveled a long distance. It will go to the mixer and I know to this mixer, another input applied will be a locally generated carrier signal, right? So here, I this frequency is manageable. I decide it in a way so that according to the input signal, I give local oscillator frequency so that difference of A and B comes out to be 455 kilohertz so this is my IF frequency for my amplitude modulated wave right which is which passes through filter then some sort of amplification and uh, use of filters is something that we can do in stages in any kind of receivers amplifiers and filtering is applied at every stage right after it is converted into IF range the next task is to demodulate the signal. Till now, like this frequency must be in megahertz or gigahertz range. Now, uh, because of conversion into IF range, it has got converted into kilohertz range. But I know if I am specifically talking about audio frequencies that lies in the range of 20 to 20 kilohertz. So, uh, so demodulation will do the needful, right? My IF frequency now will be converted back to my audio frequency. For that, I am going to use specific kind of demodulators. Like for AM, conventional AM, we use on roll-up detector for DSBSC, SSB or VSB. We do use coherent detectors. After demodulation, my when my message frequency is extracted from the radio waves, now this will be amplified and finally it will be passed to the end destination. This is how my super heterodyne receiver works. And why the name super heterodyne? Why the name heterodyning? Heterodyning means mixing. So here all this occurs because of mixing of signals at this product modulator. So heterodyning means mixing. After we receive radio frequency, we do pass it to a product modulator or mixer. Hence heterodyning occurs here. So this is called as super heterodyne receiver. Right? This is a tuned oscillator this is connected to the rf section it reads what value is provided as input and it manages its frequency accordingly so that a minus b comes out to be 455 this is a well known fact and a universal fact right so this is how my super heterodyne receiver works this is all we have just discussed the rf tuner section uh, the amplitude modulated wave received by the antenna is first passed to the tuner circuit through a transformer, the tuner circuit is nothing but an L. A filter, filter will be what? A tuning circuit will be having RC or LC combination, which is also called as a resonant or tank circuit. 
why it is called as tank circuit it selects the frequency desired by the am receiver also it tunes the local oscillator like i said also it tunes the local oscillator and the rf filter at the same time next section is my rf mixer the signal from the tuner or output is sent to the rf uh, if converter which acts as a mixer it has a local oscillator which produces a constant frequency the mixing process is done here having the received signal as one input and local oscillator frequency as the other input so what it will be generating basically a minus b and a plus b so i uh, we can name it as f1 plus f2 and f1 minus f2 and with the help of desired filters you may choose which frequency you require right output of a product modulator will be n number of harmonics and depending on the preceding step that is what kind of filter i am using i may fetch the frequency which is desired right if filter intermediate frequency filter is a bandpass filter you know a receiver has series of amplifiers and bandpass filters and finally at the demodulator it will have some low pass filters right so quality of my receiver also depends on how many filters i do use all the number of filters will correspond to complexity as well as price so this is how an amd modulator it consists of my uh, uh, like i said the conventional am will have envelope detector and uh, my dsb sc ssp and vsb will have my uh, coherent detectors next is my audio amplifier so uh, next thing we talk about is agc circuits automatic gain control this is a part of super super heterodyne receiver it enables the gain of the receiver to be controlled to level the audio output so this is an important part of my receiver it is to prevent the overloading so acgs are very important so this is how my circuit looks like when i receive signal and it passes through mixer then if amplifier the limiter discriminator demphasis audio amplifier and speaker to this limiter i do provide the AG agc circuit which acts in feedback right so it acts in feedback automatic gain control so it manages the gain right it manages the gain and prevents overloading so to manage the gain it it is applied in feedback loop another small topic which is left for the unit is carrier acquisition what is carrier acquisition we know in in case of uh, coherent detection we need to generate exactly the same carrier at receiver although my receiver is geographically separated from my transmitter hence if i want to generate carrier at this point carrier must be locally generated but acquisition of this carrier is important and which is a difficult task as well so the suppressed carrier communication the demodulation produces a uh, process requires an identical local oscillator at the demodulator right so it must be have uh, must be having same frequency and phase so which is a difficult task but carrier acquisition is important in communication why do we need carrier acquisition because for coherent detection my carrier must be coherent in phase and frequency to the carrier which was used at transmitter if the frequency or phase of the signal is different then we may get some phase error and that phase error might need to quadrature null effect which was which i have already discussed in coherent detection so these are the references i have used thank you